Thank you. Thank you all for um, sharing more about your work. Um, but yeah, let's get into the honeycomb of it all and, and talk about your connections with honeycomb, the origins of that. I, I know um, for, for a lot of you, there's sort of deep relationships with honeycomb, maybe um, some, some newer connections. How did um, you know, those relationships start and what has the honeycomb um, relationship meant to your work? Um, so so during the pandemic, like in the, in the thick of the pandemic in 2020, um, it was going to be our, our third year to host, a, to host a trunk party for our youth who are going off to college. And a lot of our youth going to college, is the first, they're the first person in, in, their, um, in their neighborhood, their family, to go to college and just have a lot of unfamiliarity of what they need and may not have the resources either. So, um, so we've been hosting this trunk party and, you know, just like a fun thing. You know, we got a DJ and food and whatever. Um, and we had like been, you know, we, it's usually like just scrapping it all together. And then Honeycomb comes in in 2020 as a partner and um, just really like took a lot of ownership of, um, of providing a lot of the goods because um, they have like such a, an extensive network, as you all know, to, to get donations. And, and so... Um, just really was just a huge support and relief to us, and and then also like brought in brought in um, families to volunteer, and that's cool too for you know for kids to see that maybe like not everybody knows that you can go to college, and you know and here's a way to help people, and um, so so that was a start, and then they kept showing up every year since then. So um, this past summer was was our fourth trunk party together. I hope that we do it together forever um, because it's a beautiful thing and it's so seamless and we really appreciate their support. The Chicago Pursuit, all of our all of our kids that we distribute to schools are made by volunteers. And last year I realized that if I don't have enough volunteers then I'm making them all and that's a lot of time and capacity that I could be, you know, writing grants. So I either through social media or through one of our collaborators um, found Honeycomb Network, and I was really hesitant. The The volunteering does seem to be really fun for adults, but I was like, I don't know if this is gonna translate to family. So I was really, really nervous. The best part about Honeycomb is that they, they helped me figure out how to make it work, right? And what sort of happened is something really cool where now the families come and when the kids get bored of actually like making the kits, they get to draw on the boxes that go to schools. And so they've started putting recipes on it. They've started putting like, why beets are good for you on the box. And so then the kids in the schools now get these like really cool messages. So it's something that I never would have thought about doing. And that's the best part about having families and kids, right? Is that they're going to be innovative. They're going to be creative. They have no limit on their imagination. And um, so it's been really fun. And then there are, you know, the little things that get them really excited. Like they get to, you know, drive my little wagon and bring the boxes from, you know, once where we're volunteering to where we store them and they like fight for who gets to do it. Especially being in an institutional space, right? Like, I, I think it's hard for sometimes people to think like how do especially young children like activate an, an institutional space, right? right. 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 And we started this program where, um, you know, we're making in the gallery and from the artwork and around it. So there's a sort of relationship between the the cards that are making and creating that like personal connection to, you know, veterans or active duty military folks. And like the idea is like, it doesn't have to be like a thank you for your service is enough, right? It's like the one of the bigger messages is like the human connection, right? Like how we bridge these connections. Like they don't have to, you don't have to create walls between us because like I don't have your experience. Yeah. And um, so some of the things that are in the cards and like, especially for the, the cards that are going to other military kids right i'm like if you were a mil like you put yourself into that situation and so it's like kind of helping you you know think about like the other experiences like empathize in that way i was like what would you like to hear of having partners who listen shout out to akia because like anytime <laughs> I, I just can't like i'm like we're out of yeah like we're out of <laughs> I, the fact that i can call you and be like i need more screen printing ink you're like got it I need this, got it. You know, like because you have a partner that has that support. You're like, I okay, I have the teaching, training, well, I can do that part. It's like where can you fill those gaps? Like support each other for this. And not only that, that that um, we have curriculum overview. You're like, how's like the check-ins? It's not just like you as a partner run this program. It's just, it's like the evaluation and quality of checking what's working and what's not, and like how do we improve it? Like I was looking at some, I take like a sample of cards from each stack. 
I was looking at some like early programs. I was like, we didn't really figure it out with this. <laughs> it, was like, it was like trying to like dear service member. You're like, you know, and then we moved into the like, let's make it personal. And that's because like the professional, even, you know, like, yeah, sure, I'm a director, but like that doesn't mean. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I, that, that feedback I get from working with another programs person. Mm-hmm. Sometimes adults show up for, I mean, no offense to the adults in the room, but, <laughs> but sometimes adults show up for, for volunteer activities and they're like, I'm going to do the thing, I'm going to do it as fast as I can. And I feel like families are really like, oh, like I'm here for the experience and you know, like I'm here for like the whole thing. And so, so there, there is like a different quality to it. I think about all the leaders too that have led this program over the 10 years and like how I keep seeing them, like, you know, we, we find each other, I think that's very honeycomb though, right? Mm-hmm. You like you find yeah. each other in other parts of your life or like start volunteering with other organizations and um, it's really just a good community building program. Mm-hmm. So one thing that I will try and always emphasize with all volunteer groups is this is not a competition, <laughs> right? <laughs> we are in a garden, we are encouraging gardening. This is a space to be with ourselves, to listen to our bodies, um, to really try and just like be present. Mm-hmm. And I don't have to do that with the families because I know that it's not going to be a competition. I know that the goal is to just be present, to just hang out, to just do something good for the world. I'm jiggling because I think about, I think when parents come with their kids, they think their kids are going to do just the art. And I was like, oh no, this is everyone. (laughs) (laughs) so you see, like, (laughs) I just said, watching adults who are like, I've never made artwork since like elementary school, like like, be playful with their kids. And the kids are like jumping in because they're all like, we're artists. Mm -hmm. We got this. Talking more about like other sort of um, partner organizations and sort of connecting with sort of the nonprofit organization landscape. Um, in Chicago, um, it's been really difficult post COVID. Um, and how have your organizations sort of, sort of um, um, changed in the past well a, a year, sort of COVID um, <laughs> organization? <laughs> but how has sort of COVID, the COVID um, sort of landscape or sort of realities um, been um, a factor in, in, in your organization? So in the two years that I was gone and staff left, there was no programming happening at the museum. And it was actually uh, Giselle reconnected with Honeycomb Project. So Honeycomb Project was the first program we had uh, in October of last year, like in two years. And so those, and that was like, yeah, so just like, has like rebuilding the community. I know I hear all the time people like, oh, I didn't hear hear about that museum. Our collection has been around for like 30 years in Mm -hmm. Chicago, but you know, know, there's a little bit of pride of like, yeah, we're a hidden gem, but you know, after losing your, your, volunteer base, losing your like attendance base. Um, I think the, our hardest hit that I've noticed that's being repaired now is that like we have a lot of veteran volunteers and veteran artists that have come and worked with the families at Honeycomb Project and other programs who, you know, felt incredibly isolated um, mm-hmm. during uh, the pandemic and, you know, we're, be- we're able to pull it in now because we have programming again. And, um, yeah, I don't think there's a bigger impact than that. It's just like feeling like you're part of something. And like, uh, yeah, I think that that loss during those two years was like incredibly rough. And so the fact that it, it programming's back and, you know, we can be together again, that's like, it's amazing.